This is Chris Whalen, CPA, and welcome to the Street Level Business Podcast. First, if you already have a question for me, please pause the podcast and call me on 732-673-0510. My CPA firm specializes in business and income tax matters for businesses and families and offers the full array of services you would expect from a full-service CPA firm. As the name implies, this podcast offers advice for those of us working and living at the street level. If you look at your screen, you will see my website and phone number, both great ways to reach me. Today's topic is, do the rich pay their fair share of income taxes? The answer depends on what your definition of fair is. This podcast will give you a fact-based analysis of how much tax the 1% in the country pay, and I will allow you to make the decision, when I am done, if you feel that what they pay is fair. Over the past few decades, everyone has heard from certain media outlets that the rich don't pay enough of their fair share in taxes, and that the rich pay less taxes than their clerical employees. The first thing to remember is that when we have heard that rich people pay less taxes than the people that work for them, this is truly disingenuous. There is never a year where someone like Mitt Romney, Donald Trump, or Warren Buffett pays less taxes than their employees. What these so-called journalists are really saying, and what the truth is, is that certain types of income is taxed at different rates than other income. So, for example, investment income, such as capital gains, may be taxed at 10%, where ordinary income, such as W-2 income, may be taxed at a higher rate. So Warren Buffett may pay 10% on his income if that income is investment-based, whereas his secretary may pay 15% on his W-2 income. The media then conflates this and says Warren Buffett pays less in taxes than his secretary. This is fake news of the greatest magnitude. Warren Buffett pays much more in taxes than anyone who works for him. Some people say that this difference in tax rates for different types of income is unfair. But remember, everyone gets this advantage when they have investment type income, not just wealthy people. I have many middle income clients who get the benefits of lower tax rates on investment income. Remember, one of the most important things about having a lower tax rate on investment type income is that it gives an incentive for people to invest their money. And this incentive is incredibly important. People having an incentive to invest their money in companies and in other assets is the key component to keeping the economy growing. Investing provides funds to companies that have innovated in health, science, and technology for many centuries now. Why is this concept important? Because the investors here, yes, are getting a tax break when they make investment type income, but we are all getting the benefits in terms of much better lives on every level from their taking the risks that they are. Remember, not all investments work out and many investors take losses. Most money that is invested goes to companies that are trying to make our lives better. Again, we are all benefiting in many ways from the rich and what they're investing in, and we have for many centuries now. Look around you. All of the creature comforts, all of these technological advances are only possible because people that had money are looking to invest it to try to make things happen. So we should all endorse having a lower tax rate on investment type income, so this will continue. So remember, many investments are highly speculative, and I can't reinforce this enough, that wealthy people lose a lot of money when their investments fail. So here's a question to ask yourself. Would you give up all of these things around us that make our lives so easy, healthy, and safe just to increase the tax rate on investment income? I know I wouldn't, and I want this to continue in the future. I hope that this gives you a different perspective on this entire issue. It is rarely discussed this way. Usually people who are in the 1% or who are thought of as rich are demonized 99% of the time. The wealthy people I deal with are just like you and me. They are very hardworking and very good people. They are looking to do the right thing for their families, just as we would, without slighting anybody else. 
They are employing many of us and taking extreme financial risks to keep the economy going. Many of us that have a job have someone in the 1% to thank. So a main point in this memo was to do our own research and not to listen to the biased media outlets and to honestly see what is underlying any position the government has taken, whether it's about taxes or any other topic. Remember, today there is no more traditional news. We have heavily partisan, agenda-driven idiocy that I ignore and believe we all should. We are given absolutely zero unbiased, fact-based information and analysis. Again, this is on both sides of the aisle, both the right and the left. This is the main reason why I do this podcast. So, back to the topic. Do the rich pay their fair share in income taxes? I've gotten this question for so long, and as always with me, I like to present the unbiased facts so you can make your own decision. So how can we analyze this? What is the measure of this? Remember, this is really comparing the rich with other people and what they pay in taxes. So that is where I'm going to start and also where I'm going to end. My logic starts with how much does the government need to spend per person to run this country? Doesn't that make sense to start there? If we're asking if someone pays their fair share of taxes, then don't we need to know what that fair share is? No one ever talks about this, which doesn't make any sense to me. How can you ask if someone's paying their fair share or accuse them of not paying their fair share when you never say exactly what their fair share is? But as I always say, I don't need to guess in my line of work. I have actual facts and figures and data that we can use to answer this question. I have put on the screen a spreadsheet chart, and what we're going to do here is we're going to first come up with what is the per person cost for the U.S. government to run every year. So let's start with the U.S. budget. In 2018, the U.S. budget is about $4 trillion. I hope everyone can see that, and please follow along with me on the screen. Our population is 326 million people, but what I've done is only taking adults into consideration. That's 252 million people. So it's very simple to calculate what is the per person adult cost to run the USA, and in this case, it's $15,873. That is a great starting point, and this is probably a figure that many of you have never known before or have thought to calculate. But it has to be our baseline to see if someone is paying their fair share of taxes, right? It is impossible to know the answer to the question this memo poses without knowing what is a share and if that share is fair. Let's talk about the word fair. This is a subjective term, isn't it? And that is used by the person speaking it to push their agenda usually. So I need to come up with what I believe is fair to use in this example, don't I? So let's say that we all agree that someone that is successful in America, meaning they're earning above average income, should give back by paying additional taxes more than other people who they are out earning. I think that summarizes what people think of when they say fair share. They are saying that the rich should pay more than enough to cover their own per person annual cost in the country, which in this case is $15,873. So actually, they are saying that the rich should pay a penalty or additional money in the form of higher taxes because they've made more money than everybody else. Now, I don't necessarily agree with that thought, but going with it, let's say that we think that someone paying 10 times the per person average is fair. That means that someone is paying enough tax to pay for their per person cost to run the country plus nine other people. This means that nine other people do not have to pay a penny in taxes all year and all of their per person costs to run the entire government are covered by someone who is rich. I think that everybody will agree that if you were forced to pay for nine other people and their expenses in any other situation, you would think this is more than fair and might even think that seems to be too much and very unfair, correct? Well, here's a quick example. Let's say that someone told you that you were now one of the rich and you had to pay 10 times the usual cost of milk from now on. A gallon of whole milk costs you $30 when it costs everyone else only $3. So nine other people grab a gallon of milk off the shelf and leave without paying a penny. Is that fair to you no matter how much money you make? Okay, looking back at the screen, that would mean a rich person would need to pay $158,734 in taxes each year, 
when their per person cost to run the country is only 10% of that, or 15873 Okay, now that we've set up a fact-based model, we can now compare that to how much the rich have paid in taxes to see if it's fair or if they're taking advantage of the system and finding loopholes to evade taxes. That's what this is all about. The media spouts off that people are using loopholes to not pay enough taxes, that the 1% are scamming the system and getting benefits and tax breaks and tax loopholes that us poor people don't have available to us. Looking at the screen, Warren Buffett paid $1.85 million in income taxes. The tax rate he paid compared to his employees does not matter and is a smokescreen meant to deceive and outrage people who don't require facts and a detailed analysis. So with that amount of tax, Warren Buffett paid for a total of 117 per person cost to run the country for a year. 117. That is for himself and 116 other people. So that means if you were Warren Buffett, that gallon of milk I mentioned a moment ago would cost you $351 when everyone else is paying $3. So is that fair? 116 other people walk in and grab a gallon of milk and leave without paying because you already picked up the tab for it. Yes, this entire question hinges on what someone believes is fair, but your answer must come from the facts. Is paying $1.85 million for something when the true cost attributed to you is only $15,873 or paying $351 for a $3 gallon of milk, which is the same ratio, fair? This brings us to the end of this edition of the Street Level Business Podcast. Do you have questions or concerns? Please call me on 732 732- 673-0510. Thanks for listening. I hope you found this podcast informative. If you want to become a subscriber to my business and tax memos, please send an email to CPA at gmail.com and I will add you. Remember, the moment you have a business or tax question is the moment you should be calling me. Have a great day.